Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today join me here for another race analysis video of my previous race, which was a double header at Cal Speed Karting. So Saturday was the Sprint Series and Sunday was the Super Series. And Saturday went terribly. Uh, this is what happened in the main race. Yeah, that was uh, not fun. No one was injured, uh, but the cart was quite damaged, as you can see in this photo here. So that was not fun at all, but on Sunday, I knew we had to make up for this, and that's exactly what we did. We actually got back on the podium, which is exciting, after starting the race in ninth, and one interesting fact I did notice was I had cart number 30. Now you might say, what's the big deal about cart number 30? Well, you might remember in the first podium I had, I had cart number 30 as well. And I think in the past, five main races, I've had cart number 30. So kind of a weird coincidence. Don't know if there's any pattern to that, but it's a good cart, so I'm plenty happy with that. And Sunday wasn't really going that well for me. It's just in qualifying and in the heats, I just really didn't have the pace. So purely down to me. And the carts I had, they were not great, but they definitely weren't bad. But in the main race, really worked on it, and it turned out to be incredible. I was leading for part of the race, had a good start, and fell back to fifth and I worked my way up and the last lap made a pass, get back on the podium and it was a drag race to the finish. I was only 0.016 away from finishing in second that race, which was just incredible to be honest. It was a crazy finish. I think it was only half a second between first and fifth. So yeah, just super crazy race, but definitely enjoyable and definitely one of my best drives ever. I mean, the wheel to wheel action you'll see in this video, just crazy. All right, here we are waiting on the grid, just waiting for that green flag and there it is. So already I got a good start, was really working on getting a good reaction and getting my foot in the throttle perfectly. And that's what I did here. So through here, just kind of sneaking around the outside, generally it's quicker. However, if you see cart 41, he got slowed down a bunch, so I had to brake. Which is a big shame because I had a lot of good momentum going uphill, passing a few people already. Went down the inside, hit a little bit of curb there. Even plenty of room on the outside, and that definitely helped. I wasn't doing that earlier in the race. Now through here, I had a decent gap to the people in front of me, so I just had to be consistent and start working my way, which was nice because usually you don't get clear track on lap one. And so through here, Contino, working my way on the inside. However, you want to be in the inside for the next turn. However, I do get a better exit, so I'm able to do that. So through here, I'm already up into, I want to say fourth, I believe. So pretty good for sure. So coming through here, I can see that the pack in front of me is uh, deucing it out for sure. And so I'm just waiting for them to make a mistake and then I come and sneak up. And surprisingly, it actually didn't take me as long as I expected. They're about a second above. And already coming up the hill, I was already at them, which is kind of crazy. You know, I think in this race, whoever had clean track was usually going to be the fastest. Because, you know, you can run in groups of two or three. But anything more than that, you got to be really precise and... Not always easy to do. So coming up to the hairpin, I've got an okay opportunity, but I don't overtake there just because I wasn't close enough to end the momentum and I figured I'd have a better spot. And again, just waiting for them to make a mistake. And this guy makes a mistake and I go on the curb. We actually make contact there. If we rewind here. So you can see that the gap is clearly there for me. However, since there's no mirrors, he's not looking back to see if I'm going to be there. So I decided to go for it. And he's staying on the regular racing line and I'm getting squeezed off on this curb. And as you can see, that wheel is like right on the lip of the curb. So we're coming through here and I'm on the curb and it's his rear wheel that hits the front of my car, actually lifts it up, kind of bounce in the air. So I lose traction, start to oversteer. I'm able to correct it and catch it, luckily. And so obviously I'm gonna lose time in the straight here. But I look back and I got a couple carts right behind me. So I just gotta be defensive through here and then I can get him going back onto the straightaway. And that's exactly what I do. What I don't realize, though, is they, that momentum I lost there was really crucial. He sends it down the inside, 41, way too aggressive, though. But 37 gets the clean pass, and they both get by me. And then here you go, 58 getting by me. So that mistake, really costly, which was surprising because all of a sudden it went from, you know, running up front, and now I'm in the mid-pack again. So through here, I'm just working on, you know, getting clean track, and he spins out into the barrier back there. And we're now starting to run close. He leaves a spot on the inside there for me. 
So that's how I'm able to get by there. Pretty simple. Once again, I find myself in a similar situation to what I was in earlier. So coming out of the hairpin, I notice he is again trying to fight back, but on that turn, you do not want to be in the outside. It's reason, longer distance, and there's plenty of grip on the inside. And through here, I'm starting to get a good run. However, the one thing I noticed was the amount of traffic going into Contino is crazy. Through here, I'm on the outside, and you know my only other option would be to lift, but obviously don't really want to do that. Running in that draft, just waiting for the two of them to make contact, which they do. I'm able to take the position on the inside, although I don't really clearly get by. I take a look on the inside here, but I didn't have the momentum. However, I get him on the exit, so that actually worked in my favor. However, he's not lifting. He's right there, so getting very, very interesting. Now, through here, I'm sitting in third, and this is where I do finish the race. However, it's not in this exact order, so I'm letting them kind of pull away just a little bit so I can get clean track, let them make a mistake, because I don't want to be completely, you know, bump drafting. So through here on this part of the track, I'm just trying to get a good exit here. That's all my focus. I can see them really battling it out on the exit to the straightaway, which you don't usually want to do because obviously that'll compromise you on the top end. And I'm starting to catch them, but it's not a major momentum. And that's the big thing. I had good pace, but it wasn't race winning where I could just pull a gap and then lead from there. You know, I was really, really having to fight hard. So again, working the draft through here and just waiting for the opportunity to come. Now coming through here, this is where I made the overtake my previous podium and I take a look down the inside, but again, not a good moment. However, he then screws up that corner. And so obviously I'm able to get by along the 29. Turns out he actually had a drive through penalty. So that's what caused that. So I'm now sitting in second pretty comfortably, and I'm just working on cutting that gap down to first. And pace-wise, we were pretty much equal, so I was kind of holding that same gap, which was a bit annoying, simply because, you know, you're pushing your hardest, and, you know, the gap's not closing. So it's just, it's all about patience. You don't want to overdrive, obviously. Now, coming through here, I'm starting to close the gap a little bit, get a better exit. And 43, much slower. I'm looking around the outside, potentially on the inside, and it doesn't work. What's really interesting, though, is if we look behind us. So, car 29 here, sticking to the outside of me there, and then just totally looks for the dive bomb on the inside, and it almost works. So he's being very aggressive and just going for any gap, so I had to be smart defensively, but at the same time, I also need to make an overtake into first. Now, through here, I get a much better exit than the other cart or wheel to wheel. However, I'm on the outside, so I know this isn't good. So what I do is I try to squeeze her to the inside, and it doesn't really work. And all of a sudden, like I said, here's 29 again on the outside. Smart defensively, he looks, doesn't go for it. So now we're really close. And now we're just completely drag racing down the line. So I'm just looking to slot in behind. Coming into horseshoe here, I'm able to carry a really good line and take a lot of speed. And card 43, again, just makes a mistake there. And what was smart was she was very aggressive defensively. And so, again, I can't go for an overtake there, and I'm actually held on the outside. Get bumped from the rear. The reason I was getting bumped in the rear there constantly was trying a new braking tactic going into Long Beach. So that's why I was a bit slower in entrance to help him exit. Going through turn one and two, heading up the hill, lots and lots of momentum. So I decided to send it down the inside, then I pull out. Just the momentum wasn't there, and it was not going to end well. Didn't want to risk it. Now, coming into Contino here, I'm carrying much more speed. And now I'm just looking for that good exit. And just slotting in behind and just being strategic with cart placement. So I do a little bit of a dummy there. Sneak to the inside, go to the outside. And then she ends up understeering there. No contact was made. And then 29 gets through as well. So I'm now leading the race, which is pretty exciting. Although she sends it right back down the inside. However, we're wheel to wheel going down the line. This was definitely exciting for sure, but at the same time, it was very nerve-wracking. As you can see, all the carts just piling up behind. She ends up getting by there. Again, not too much I can really do. And this is where the race kind of, I wouldn't say falls away from me, but as you can see, I fall back all the way into fifth. So let's go analyze what happened there. So coming up the hill here, she's on the inside for turn one and she's ahead. So naturally, I'm not going to fight that. Just let her get by. And that's the way that is. Now, as you can see, I'm coming up, but I'm getting a little bit of oversteer, a little bit of understeer. Cart's just unhappy. And then as you can see, she's really understeering. So I'm able to go for that gap on the inside. And that was a stupid decision. Why was it stupid? Well, 
you don't want to be on the outside for up here and what's known as turn four. So as you can see, all the other cards slot in right behind her on the inside, and what they naturally do is just push right on through. Completely legal, nothing wrong with that, and so it's just a mistake, a choice I made, and obviously I didn't make the right one. Now through here, I'm able to stick by and go on the inside and claim back third, although I gotta say, really aggressive card 29 there, just totally holding onto the position, which going through Scandi, very bold thing to do. So now I'm in third and the two of them are pulling away. So my goal is just keep the podium spot in third and if we can get any higher, that's great. So because I had clean track and I did really well through turn one here, I'm already caught up to the two of them. My only issue was again, finding that clear track to pass. It was just hard, you know, because the two of them were running slightly different lines. And of course, if you want to overtake, you got to choose a line and both of them were blocked. So nothing I can do there. Through here, I let the two of them send it down the inside. I go to cug the inside curb, and then as you can see, car 29, very aggressive again, he gets by me. So coming through here, I'm looking on that inside, ideally to place my cart kind of on that curb there, but if you see how aggressive 29 is, just nothing I can do there. I go, I go to turn in, you can see I'm just kind of surprised at the steering wheel. I turn in, then I have to back out, because he's there. It's a very aggressive move, but it was a very good one for sure. Pushes me a little wide there. I don't get that good of an exit, and I fall back into fourth. So through here, I'm just working on trying to get a good draft up the straightaway, but the three of them are pulling away, and then I got 58 on my inside. However, I'm further ahead, so no big deal going up. And this is where it gets very sketchy, as you can see there. So obviously, he throws his hand up. You know what happened there. Well, let me explain. Going through turn one, I'm always able to carry much more speed than everyone else. And going up the hill, as you noticed, I was able to just pass people and have good momentum. And so through here, my trick for an overtake here is stay on the inside and use the whole curb. And where my gap is currently, plenty of space to do that. Nothing wrong. However, since these cards don't have mirrors and he wasn't looking back, and you obviously don't want to look back there, he didn't see me. So as I'm going for the gap, I'm fully committed. And all of a sudden, I see right here that the gap is no longer available. So... I turn the wheel as trying to use it as a brake, and then I end up understeering. So I sort of straighten it out, use the curb. I actually hit the barrier there. If we go straight over the curb, and you can see he gives me no room at all. It's a racing incident simply because he didn't see me there, and then he also cut me off, and the gap I went for wasn't that unrealistic. So I think it was a fair call. So you see I hit the barrier there, and cart starts to oversteer. We're both able to catch him. What's kind of cool is... We do a little bit of a tandem drift there. You see this? So yeah, Tokyo Drift style through there. I don't lose that much, although he does get by. However, I'm able to sneak on the inside for the next turn up here. So I sneak on the inside, use up the curb there, and I just don't have the momentum. So it was a costly mistake, but it really wasn't time-wise. It was just the position I lost. I just commit and send it down the inside in the hairpin, and the whole weekend I was not comfortable overtaking there. But I knew this is it. If I get a penalty, you know, it's already been a bad weekend. So I'll go for it. So I went for it, and it worked. Now the three of them battling it out, and naturally with traffic and all, I'm able to catch back up. So again, I'm just all about being patient here and just waiting for that perfect opportunity to come. So coming through Contino again, we get close, but I just struggling with momentum there. But again, able to just work on that draft, place myself in, because through here, obviously... He goes wide, there's less grip there, I'm able to get by. And I have momentum for an overtake, but the way she blocked me, card 43, she's brilliant. Couldn't get by there. So coming down the line, total drag race to the finish, and I'm doing the carding DRS just because. And there you go, P3 at the finish. I mean, if you look at this finish real quick, I was 0 0.016 away from second and only a couple tenths off from first, and then fourth was right there, and fifth right there, and sixth and seventh. So very, very close finish. And it was this way in all the races. It wasn't just this race in particular. So you can see at the line, I mean, we're talking five inches, four inches. I mean, it was crazy, but definitely an exciting finish for sure. All right, so there you have it. So could I have won that race? In theory, yes. Uh, had I started further up, not dealt with traffic, Maybe I could have. However, if you look at raw pace-wise, I probably, and I would say maybe definitely, 
would have finished in second. But from starting in ninth and working through with traffic and all that, it's just, it was the best I could do. And, you know, the one instance where I made that mistake and I fell back to fifth, it was just purely bad timing. That mistake normally wouldn't cost you three positions. But like I said, they were working in that bump draft. So nothing I could do there, but I'm still very happy with it, you know. Getting a top three is always great. And yeah, it was just a good way to end the weekend for sure. And the good part, we're doing this again soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.